this is what it sounds like. It's just a simple uh, sawtooth waveform. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of noodle around for a little bit and um, try to see what note sounds the best with the overall key of the song. And, um, you know, I it's kind of something that just comes to you. I mean, you're not going to sit down and be able to have the ear for it right away. It's going to take practice, but um, it's just something you kind of know uh, that works, you know, when it happens. You'll hear what I'm talking about, so. <laughs> Okay, so those two notes work the best. I think the last two I was playing, that's an it's an A and an E. And uh, to me, the A sounded better. It sounded uh, like it fit the song better. I think the E harmonizes with it, but um, I think just the A is what works with this song. So now that we've got the, um, the root note of the song, we're going to play variations um, of chords. We're going to have an A minor chord and an A major chord, and I'm going to play between the two. Uh, here's what an A minor sounds like for reference real quick. Hold on. And here's an A major. So I'm going to alternate between those two chords while the song plays, and uh, you'll get it. the same thing with the root note. It's something one of them will just sound more right than the other, or better than the other. So. <laughs> So uh, it sounds like to me the A minor works a lot better than the A major with that one. So um, we know the key, and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rename the track, and um, I'm going to add the A minor, and uh, we remember it's 130 BPM, so I'm going to add the BPM to the track title as well. And uh, this is my way of organizing songs. You guys don't have to have to do it this way exactly. Um, this is just how I do it. Let me stop the, the track real quick, too. The playhead was still going. So, okay, we have it set to A minor, and uh, it's 130 BPM. Now I'm going to go back to the mixed and key wheel, because this is the method I'm going to use. Um, this is just easier. You don't have to remember which songs mix with each other exactly. You can just uh, use Camelot's, uh, that's the company that does mixing key. You can use their system uh, and do it that way basically. So um, we remembered it was A minor, so I'm going to find A minor on the wheel here. And uh, we know that that's an 8A according to their system that they use. So I'm going to go back into Ableton Live and I'm going to rename this track again. And this time I'm going to put 8A in front of the A minor. And that way, now, um, if there is a song that's in 7A or 6A or 8B, that those would mix perfectly with this song. Obviously, the BPM has to be, like I said, within a 10, uh, 10 BPM range. But with this setup now, you can go through hundreds of songs and organize them all this way, and uh, you'll have a pretty good idea as to which keys will blend perfectly with each other. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to warp our tracks. And warping um, is a bit tedious, and um, it does take a little bit of practice to really get down. I'm not going to sit here and make you uh, watch me warp a whole entire track, but I will go over the basics of it and how I warp tracks. Um, so we have the song that we've been working with now. Uh, we found the key of it and uh, the BPM of, it, BPM of it as well. And um, we know it's 130 BPM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set our overall project tempo to 130 BPM as well. That way we can uh, use our metronome um, when we're warping the track to keep uh, time uh, to make sure that it sounds good. So um, I'm going to zoom into our track pretty close. Um, this is a typical 4-4 electro house beat. It's just uh, there's a kick drum basically every beat of the measure. And um, 
it's really easy to find the the beginning of the song. Some songs aren't like that. Some are, are might start on on an offbeat, and uh, this one is just easy. To, and most dance songs are pretty easy to find the uh, the intro of it too. But if it starts off with like a swelling pad and there's no beat really keeping it in the beginning, you probably want to set your start marker, which is right here, um, to the beginning of the first beat in the song. Um, that'll make it a lot easier for you to sync up songs together. That way, you don't have to worry about it too much so um, this is the first kick drum beat right here of the song and I'm gonna zoom in pretty close and I'll bring it back a bit and that looks like about a good spot right there where it's starting and um, once I have it my position set my start marker is, is good I'm gonna want to right click on it and I'm gonna click warp from here straight and this is gonna set up um, grid markers so that means that it, the track is warped but only with warp one warp marker so I don't have a bunch of other ones here, uh, you know, at the end of the song or randomly placed by, well, not randomly placed, but placed by Ableton. Um, so this gives me the freedom to warp the song myself. And if you notice over here on the two, on the beat uh, ruler here, this is the second beat. Um, the kick track or the 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 kick drum here on the track is pretty close to lining up with this two, which is a very good sign. Um, so. If you go further down the song, you'll notice though that they do start to deviate a little bit. Um, like on 204, you can kind of tell that's a that's the beginning of another hit there, kick hit or something. You can see that it's moved away. It's just a little bit from the 204. Um, it's probably it probably wouldn't be that noticeable to the ear, but when you are syncing tracks together, you want them to be as accurate as possible. So um, we're gonna fix that right now and. Um, the best way to do that is to start a loop or set a loop here, clicking on the loop button. And I already have the link length set to 16, which is good. Um, if you don't, you're going to have to click on it and just hit um, 16 on your uh, keyboard and hit enter. And uh, we're going to set the position to 1, so it starts at the beginning of the song. And this is a 16-bar loop. Um, I'm going to go through. I, I mean, at the end of it, that looks like another kick hit there. So it's pretty good. Um, I could probably zoom in a little bit maybe drag it back just a bit we'll see if that messes with any of the other hits in here we'll go to like 15 and see how that looks now that's still pretty spot on right there with that hit so um that this entire 16 bar loop right here is pretty much in sync with the metronome and i'll show you what i'm talking about right now i'm going to activate the metronome by clicking here and i'm going to hit the play button here and you'll hear the metronome syncing up with the track so you can hear the um, you can hear the metronome lining up with every kick drum, which is good. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the the uh, loop brackets ahead to the 17 spot here on the uh, beat marker. And that's going to shift it another 16 uh, measures over. And um, you do that by clicking on the loop brackets once and holding down the shift button and pressing the right key. I'm sorry, the up key. Let me go back real quick. Sorry about that. Uh, you're going to hold down the shift button and press the up key. And that's going to shift you ahead another 16 measures or bars, which is good. And uh, we can see here this one's pretty close. This is the end of this hit. Um, I'm going to drag it up just a little bit more here. And if we look at another one of these hits here, they're looking pretty good. I might actually... Yeah, that's that does look like a kick, kick hit. We'll use a 31. That's a kind of a better visual here. And that's pretty close as well. It's, it's maybe a micro millisecond off, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. So um, I've set up the marker there, and uh, we're going to do it again. And you just keep going forward uh, until you've reached the end of the track basically by doing this setting up warp markers and uh, by the end of it you should have a perfectly warped track uh, and it might take a few tries but um, it's like I said it's not something that'll come right away and you will get used to it but um, just keep doing it and, and you'll get pretty good at warping tracks and uh, that's it that's how you warp tracks so that's the end of uh, part one for this tutorial and um, I don't know if I'm gonna make it another two parts or three parts we'll see um, I will get into mixing songs, blending songs um, on deck A and deck B. I'm sorry I didn't get time to get into that right now, 
but I, I hope this gives you guys a good um, reference and starting point to or organizing your songs and being able to warp them in Ableton to um, set up a good uh, library for DJing with. So uh, thanks for watching the video. Enjoy and have fun.